during transcription the recognition of uh, DNA by RNA relies on Watson Crick base pairing or hydrogen bonds so that let's say we have a, a DNA um, and these um, deoxynucleoside monophosphates are recognized by nucleoside uh, triphosphates by base pairing where hydrogen bonds are formed between uh, the pairs um, and that underlies the mechanism by which the correct um, nucleoside triphosphate is added to the growing RNA chain. Could translation work in much the same way. So for example, if we had a um, an RNA molecule and here's a codon GCG which is the codon for um, alanine could, uh, could it be possible that alanine could pair with it much the same way as RNA and DNA pair by Watson Crick base pairing. And there's a problem here. And the problem is that hydrophobic amino acids which are neither charged nor polar cannot make hydrogen bonds And so, um, Crick proposed, uh, uh, Francis Crick proposed that there must be an adapter that intermediates between um, RNA and amino acids. And it turns out that he was right. And this, um, uh, this intermediary, this adapter is known as transfer RNA or tRNA and um, what a transfer RNA is uh, uh, basically an uh, RNA molecule that can carry an amino acid at its three prime end and it has this characteristic clover leaf shape because of CG and UG base pairing and the the tRNA has an anticodon loop that contains three base pairs that are complementary to the the codon that this tRNA recognizes these um, three base pairs are known as the anticodon and um, we always write the codon 5 prime to 3 prime so in this case the codon is GCA but the anticodon is always written 3 prime to 5 prime so the uh, anticodon for this tRNA is CGU and so this is anticodon whereas in blue we have the codon um, another thing um, to know about these uh, tRNAs is that they come in two forms one is 
when there is no amino acid. So the tRNA is not carrying an, a, any amino acid and then it's called just a tRNA. However, if you have an amino acid attached um, to the three prime site, so we say there is an amino acid, then we say that this tRNA is charged That means it's carrying the amino acid and also the molecule is called an amino acyl tRNA. Right? So um, when there is no amino acid uh, attached to the, the tRNA at the three prime end, then it's referred to as just the tRNA. Um, an uncharged tRNA, whereas when you have an amino acid attached to the three prime end, then um, we refer to the molecule as amino acyl tRNA, and we say that the tRNA has been charged. Next, what experimental evidence do we have that the um, it's actually the tRNA? which is uh, recognizing the codon and not the amino acid directly. Remember that it, it was just a hypothesis that um, there must be an adapter molecule since amino acids can't form hydrogen bonds and base pair with, with uh, codons. But how do we really know this? And the, this evidence comes from um, in vitro uh, translation experiments So translation carried out in a test tube in which you take um, amino acyl <clears throat> uh, tRNA so for a particular amino acid so in this case a cysteine tRNA that has been uh, um, charged by cysteine so um, th this is the tRNA for cysteine and now you have charged this tRNA with cysteine and what you do is you treat these uh, charged tRNAs with nickel hydride and what nickel hydride does is it converts the amino acid cysteine to alanine so whereas this uh, tRNA was charged with cysteine before, it becomes charged with alanine. All the cysteines that were attached to the tRNA have been converted to alanine. However, we have not changed the, uh, the anticodon on this tRNA. The anticodon is still um, recognizing the cysteine um, codon since nickel hydride only acts on the amino acid and then when you carry out in vitro translation um, with these modified tRNAs which have the anticodon for cysteine but are charged with alanine it turns out that all the locations all the positions with cysteine in the polypeptide have alanine instead. And this is um, evidence that it is the um, tRNA itself that recognizes the codon and not the amino acid because if we <clears throat> If the amino acid were responsible for recognition, then um, you would not have um, replaced the cysteines with alanines 
um, alanine would not have been able to recognize the cysteine anticodon. tRNAs are charged by enzymes known as amino acyl tRNA synthesis and what amino acyl uh, tRNA synthesis do is that they take uh, amino acids and the tRNA and they catalyze the attachment of the amino acid to um, the uh, three prime end of the uh, tRNA thereby charging the tRNA and there are 20 amino acids and there are 20 amino acyl tRNA synthesis. So there is one amino acyl tRNA synthase for every amino acid. Now we know that there are 61 codons that code for amino acids. There are a total of 64 codons uh, that are possible because we have a triplet genetic code and three of those codons are dedicated as stop codons. Therefore, we result uh, we have 61 codons that can uh, code for amino acids. Now, as it turns out, you don't need um, 61 or you don't have 61 tRNAs, one for each codon. So you have less than 61 tRNAs. That means you have less than 61 anticodons. And, you know, the fact that there are 61 codons but only 20 amino acids, this is known as degeneracy. But it's in interesting that you don't actually need 61 anticodons to recognize 61 codons. And um, to give you a concrete example, UCC UCC and UC, UCU are codons for serine, but they are both recognized by the same anticodon, AGG. And the way this is achieved is, um, one, uracil can base pair with guanine. And that's what's shown here that even though AGG should not be able to recognize the codon UCU, it in fact does because uracil can base pair with guanine. And this modified base pairing, which is does not follow Watson Crick rules, only happens in the five prime position of the anticodon or the three prime position of the codon and this position is known as the wobble position where modified base pairing allows the same anticodon to recognize multiple different codons and there's a second factor that allows fewer than 61 tRNAs uh, or fewer than 61 anticodons to recognize 61 codons and that is that tRNA tRNAs have a rare base called inosine and inosine 
can best pair with adenine with uracil and with cytosine and uh, uh, once again this happens in the wobble position which is at the 5 prime end of the anticodon or the 3 prime end of the codon. To summarize, degeneracy is the fact that um, there are 61 codons um, for 20 amino acids. So many amino acids are um, recognized by multiple, are coded for by more than one codon. However, this is achieved without having 61 anticodons. Um, there are fewer than 61 tRNAs and this is made possible because of modified base pairing that does not follow Watson-Crick rules um, and um, because uracil can base pair with guanine and inosine can base pair with adenine, uracil and cytosine in the wobble position and altogether this is known as the wobble hypothesis.